Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox with Base Politics and welcome back to my show Histrionics where every week I'm talking about women's issues and bringing you a centralist point of view. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and also check out others in the series. Quick housekeeping before we jump into today's episode. I know I've been a little patchy over the past two weeks. As I mentioned in previous videos, I did have a hacking attempt uh, two weeks ago that shut down my entire life. Fortunately, everything is okay now, but it definitely set me behind on my production schedule. And then in an extreme turnaround, uh, I got engaged last week. So big highs and lows. Um, and that also set me back a little bit, but we are back to our regular scheduled programming. You can expect to see Histrionics at 4.30 PM on Sundays per usual every week moving forward, except the week of April 13th, because I will be out of the country. This week, we have to talk about the ick. If you hear people say like, oh, I got the ick and now I don't like them anymore. And you're like, what does ick mean? Like, why is everyone saying I got the ick? Like it's a thing. I'll explain it to you. The ick is basically your gut intuition saying this person is no longer a good option. Like there's something, a, an alarm bell goes off in your body, in your mind, in your heart, in your gut that says this person is not the fight. Like just support the mission. The ick could be something that makes you feel uncomfortable. And many times when you're looking for a partner and they don't align with you in terms of um, religion, politics, long-term life goals, kids, uh, money, or even appearance, if any of those things don't align suddenly, like after you guys have been dating for some time, um, then the ick comes. <laughs> when I first saw women discussing the ick online, I kind of got it because all women have had these experiences where they are interacting with a man that they're initially interested in, and then he does something that just totally turns them off. And back when the trend first started, most of the things I saw women calling out as icks were legitimate icks, things that men should probably stop doing. And even in having this discussion online, it really seemed like something that could maybe help men who tend to traffic in some of these tropes, avoid them and do better with women. I love this one video that identifies some of those behaviors. They call it pick me boy behavior, which I just think is funny. Hi. Hi. I'm surprised you even. <laughs> I'm surprised you even agreed to hang out. Why? Girls just usually don't agree to hang out with guys like me. What do you mean, guys like you? Oh well, I think brave, sexy, slim, fit. Yeah, I get that. I'm just so freaking ugly. Well, wouldn't you agree? Don't say that about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't. Well, do you agree or? not <laughs> am i handsome or am i ugly i mean <laughs> am i handsome or am i ugly i mean one girl's called me handsome before but i feel like she was lying yeah can we just get going i mean yeah it's not the first time someone's asked me to shut up do you want to get something to eat i'm not really hungry right now well have you eaten anything today please eat for me <laughs> what i wouldn't want my baby starving herself I'm not your baby. Well, I forgot. No one's ever gonna love a loser like me. I'm just freaking stupid. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Every girl leaves. But recently it seems like the total tone around this discussion has changed. And lately it honestly just feels like a lot of people are taking this opportunity to bully men. And not just bully men, but bully them for everyday regular behaviors that just come along with being a human. It's mean, it's anti-male, and it's honestly really regressive. I know there's been a lot of conversation in media, online, and just in society in recent years about how men are just as a whole not doing great. There's a male loneliness epidemic. A lot of men report having zero friends or support system. There are a lot of mental health issues they have that are going unaddressed. They are more unlikely to seek mental health care than women. Therefore, they have higher rates of suicide. They're also starting to fall behind financially a lot of the time. They're not obtaining college degrees at the same rates. Their pay is falling. And I think that there's room for nuance in these conversations. Some of these things are the fault of men and they need to address them versus looking at women to fix their problems. As one example, it's not the responsibility of women to provide you an emotional support system. You need to be getting that from other men as well as your partner. One person can't be a whole ecosystem 
for you. But as a whole, when we talk about these issues that are affecting men, what I would hope to see is sympathy and an ultimate desire for men to be able to turn things around versus throwing salt in wounds or kicking them when they're down. And that's where I feel like a lot of the it conversation has been going recently. I really wonder when I hear women discussing some of these things online, if they even like men at all. And if you really do hate all men, then you need to deal with that. That's not normal and it's not okay. So to give you a primer on some of the stuff I've been seeing, I want to jump in with the first video that I took offense to recently, where basically a woman says that men should not have hobbies. Listen, I don't have too much that I believe in, but I met this guy the other day and he said he took a skateboarding class as an adult. And I was like, okay, that should be illegal. That should be illegal. I'm sorry, a bunch of men in their late 20s and early 30s, people, not men, anyone, that age range, learning how to skate by a teacher. So that video is location tag Brooklyn, meaning that the place she's likely referring to is Skate Yogi. It's where I bought my skateboard at in 2020. I didn't take the classes because I already knew how to ride a skateboard. And on a good day, I can ollie. Um, but I'm making this video to say that adults should have hobbies and you shouldn't be embarrassed to pursue new hobbies. Now, I don't know whether or not she's a New York City transplant or not. I'm not gonna make that assumption. I am, I moved here when I was 23 and I'm rapidly approaching the end of my 20s. And there's a culture here, especially if you're a New York City transplant in your 20s, late 20s, early 30s, like that the only thing you're supposed to do is go to bars and drink go to clubs and drink, go to the beach and drink, and go to the park, hang out and drink. And I found that in my seven years of living here that people, but particularly people not from the city will poke fun at you for having hobbies that don't exist in their like little frame of like, we're in our twenties, we gotta go out and get it. It's the weekend, like, what are you doing? Are you like, like this whole like culture surrounding that. Do not be afraid as an adult to want to learn a new thing, to want to pick up a new thing to maybe never be good at that thing. You should have things that you do that aren't for the sake of social media, that aren't for the sake of how good you can be or whether or not it could be a side hustle or profitable or a career move. You should just have some things that you like to do for you. I have a friend who's been taking knitting classes in Queens and she's been really enjoying it. There's this spot, I have a friend down, uh, it's like, under Prospect Park or like south of Prospect Park. It's this weird like Eastern European ping pong place inside of a garage that also teaches ping pong lessons and we go there sometimes and like just do some shit that <laughs> that isn't a part of the hustle culture, isn't a part of the grind, isn't a part of being a cool something in your just have fun and find joy in an activity and don't be ashamed to do so even if it's silly even if it feels like i'm like too old for this i just enjoy your fucking life i absolutely loved that guy's pushback on her because he is spot on honestly i think this is one of the sadder icks i've ever seen because what you're telling people is they shouldn't be able to have new interests learn new things have creative outlets once they're adults so you should what, just be confined to your job or only be able to do hobbies or activities that you think are cool? Like that is extremely subjective. I have lots of friends who have hobbies and interests I don't share, but I still love that they have them. They bring them joy. They're interesting for them. They meet other people who share those same interests and hobbies that gives them more of a support network and friends. Like we want men to have hobbies. We want men to not be dependent on women to provide all of their entertainment and support and all of their needs. Needs. That happens when men get hobbies and go out into society and meet more people and find new interests. Furthermore, humans need outlets. You cannot just work and grind all day. And I cannot imagine being somebody like her who so clearly lives their lives for the camera and social media and what other people think. I have a ton of hobbies that I really enjoy. And also one of the things that brings a lot of richness to my life is adding new hobbies, discovering how to do something, trying something new, trying something that you're afraid to try even. That makes you a more well-rounded, interesting person that enables you to see and experience more of the world. I just cannot fathom going on the internet and using my voice to put out a crappy message like this. Shame on her. Next up, guys, is it gross for men to show affection? This girl seems to think so. Me. Me. 
I don't even understand what about this gave her the ick. Is it him touching you? Is it how his hand looks? What? Like, imagine how men must feel on complete eggshells around women like this. And I guess you probably don't know if you're dating a woman like this until they put something like that on TikTok, trying to embarrass you. Like, how desperate are you for clicks and likes and engagement that that's what you're doing? Your your boyfriend, your partner showing you affection. He's putting his hand on your leg and you're going to film it and mock him for the internet, you're gross. You give me the ick. Like that is bullying. Now I will say that in the course of researching this video, I did find some icks I agree with. And I thought in all fairness to this full conversation, I would roll a few of those as well. Okay, I do feel bad, but here are real reasons I've gotten the ick and stop liking guys that I've been dating. <laughs> okay, in college I was dating this frat guy and he was a SoundCloud rapper on the side. I tried to get past it, okay? So shut up. Except he would always play it every time we got in the car. He had to listen to his own music. I couldn't do it. I had an ex-boyfriend that would get upset over like things I would post. Like if I posted myself in a bathing suit on my Insta story, that would cause a four day long fight. Obviously, you guys know me. I was like, bye, I'm gonna post myself in whatever I want to wear ever. Are you kidding? And he didn't like that. <laughs> he would send me quotes like this. Don't play the ignoring game with me because I don't lose. This is real. Biggest lesson I've learned this year, probably not give so much of yourself to people who will not do the same for you. So just me not post bikini pictures, absolutely not. And things like this would be on his Instagram story the entire time. You ended up being alone after treating them special. Yeah, so if I can't post myself in a bikini, I would rather be alone. <laughs> this man had me like fighting for my life in every group chat. <laughs> I used to talk to this guy and every time he wrote yes, the word yes, he would write this word instead. I can't even say it out loud. The word yes is easier to type than this, than whatever this is. It's like I didn't even know him. I can't. This one guy would send me gifts a lot. The same guy that wrote yes like this. And instead of typing like, I'm so excited. He would send me like Buddy the Elf being like, I'm so excited. And I was like, just type it. Just type it. Okay, this one happened to my friend, but she told this guy she's having a bad day. And he sent her a video of him singing Beautiful Soul by Jesse McCartney. It was like, I don't want another pretty face. And we, that made her day so much worse. One time I got lightly hit by a taxi and I was telling this guy about it and he wrote back, that stinks, babe. I got hit by a car, Josh. That does stink. Here's more things men do that ick me out. When they make you listen to one of their SoundCloud songs and it ends up sounding like this. You when they leave the toilet seat up, when they use a five-in-one shampoo, conditioner, body wash, butt wash combo, and probably don't even wash their butts. When they think being disrespectful is really funny. When they're obsessed with their mothers. When they take off their hat after they've had it on all day. <laughs> when they do that thing where they like yak up a loogie or whatever it's called, like the <laughs> But they do it like 80 times. Gross! I could go on and on, but I'm gonna stop because I want a boyfriend one day. A lot of these made me laugh and I particularly love that content creator Rebecca. She's so funny. The one that had me going the hardest was that both of these girls brought up the whole like wannabe musician on the side, particularly when they make you listen to it or they play their own music. That is the most valid ick in the world. The best part of the Barbie movie, the best part was when all of the Kins had Barbies on the beach and were playing Matchbox 20 and like looking at them directly in their eyes and singing to them. I lived in Nashville for 13 years. I worked in the music industry. I was a singer songwriter and this behavior, nothing gives me the heebie-jeebies faster. Like when I used to be on dating apps and I saw a man with a guitar on his profile, I was like immediately left, immediately left because I've never been attracted to musicians first and foremost, but oh my God, like I don't, uh I can't explain to you men. And there are women, here's, here's the point in all of this. There are always outliers, right? Most women hate that. Most women want nothing to do that. But you will always be able to find like groupy women who think it's really hot when a man can sing or, or think it's great that you write your music and they'll be super into it. Or maybe you're really good. And if you date a woman who doesn't like you singing and playing, you won't ever actually like reach your full potential. So none of this should be Bible, but I will say I, I hardcore agree with them. I, I think it's so cringe when people want to play you their own music. I hate when men want to sing to you. I, I don't really like, I don't prefer to date men who are aspiring to be musicians at this stage in life. Let's just put it that way. So that one's kind of valid. But again, 
it's not a rule. There's always exceptions. And that's kind of the point here is these people are being so picky and it's, that might be an ick for you. It might be a turnoff to you. Maybe it's just not something you're attracted to, but to go on the internet and blast anybody who does that and act like it's just some major social faux pas to do something that you personally dislike, that's what just feels so controlling and manipulative. And again, just mean spirited because people are so vast and diverse and have so many different kinds of interests. And there is somebody out there for everybody. I firmly believe that somebody might not be for you and that's okay. But unless they're doing something that's actually really problematic, I don't know why it's getting lumped into this like discourse. Like Becca's story about her ex trying to control what kind of photos she put online and then his very weird and emotional like meme posting and, and group chat sending was weird. And it does give abusive vibes. I would not think you should date somebody like that. It's definitely controlling and it could escalate from there. Also the guy who didn't seem to be very concerned for her at all when she said a car hit her, another red flag. But are these icks or are these red flag behaviors you should be avoiding because they are symbolic of something more serious going on underneath? Other valid points I thought they made were things like spitting, leaving the toilet seat up, being disrespectful. All of these are just rude. You don't have basic etiquette. That would also turn me off and I would not want to be in a relationship with you. That's the example of a valid ick. But when you get into things like what kind of body wash they use or not liking them when they have hat hair, again, it just feels like you aren't going to actually be able to be in a relationship because guess what? People have flaws. They have bad days. People aren't always attractive at all times. And when you really love somebody, your love is enough to cover that. You have grace for them. You even come to love their flaws at times. If you don't feel that way towards somebody, then you don't need to be in a relationship with them. What you should be doing is exiting the scenario, not going online and bullying them. And this is what's so crazy to me about this, this conversation is if you were to see it go in the opposite direction towards women, there would be major backlash. Can you imagine if men were going online and they were posting like an image of their partner's hand trying to hold their hand and be like, oh, the ick and mocking the way that their body looks? Can you imagine if a man was like, oh, I get the ick when she takes off her jeans at the end of the long day and she has like marks in her skin? Like, no, that would be really mean and bullying. And it is when it goes in reverse too. Most of the time when I'm encountering this, I really do think it just comes down to women being too picky. And I don't get it because it is hard to find a good man out in these streets. I'll have another video coming soon talking about some of the absolute horror stories I've seen from women on the internet talking about their dating experiences. And there is a plethora of them. A lot of women are dealing with legit abuse and disrespect and mean spiritedness from men. But most of what I see happening around the it conversation is decent, good men doing tiny little bitty things and having women decide that it's worth writing them off over. And honestly, it's, it's for their own good. You don't want to be with these kinds of women. You're dodging a bullet because somebody who's going to write you off because of little nitpicky things about you is has issues. She needs to go resolve them. And you would be miserable trying to live up to her expectations if you tried too long term. Let's roll a few more examples of that. I have the best list on my phone of anything a man has ever done that has given me the ick. Now, I've been single for about a year now and have really taken some time to figure out things that I do and uh, definitely do not like. Um, was showing this to some of my guy friends the other day and they were like, hey, this is actually gold. You should definitely share this with the world. So here we go. All right, number one, ordering a steak, anything more than medium. To me, that says you're uncultured. It just, it does. It says that you have no good taste. I'm a big foodie. I want to go out to eat with someone who really gets food. And that's just how I feel about it. Number two, never been to a therapist. Everyone needs to go to therapy. I do not care if you were brought up in the best household ever. You need therapy. Everyone does. Everyone has some kind of trauma built up in there. Doesn't go to the dentist at least twice a year. That speaks for itself. Um, if you're gonna kiss me, you're gonna have a nice clean mouth. And yeah, that's how I feel about it. Let's keep going. No metal credit card. I'm about to get some hate here. I know I'm about to get called superficial, but at the end of the day, I want someone who's financially responsible. And I know that some people are going to argue with me that charging things on a credit card is financially irresponsible. What I think is irresponsible is paying full price for flights and hotels when you could be utilizing points on the same exact money that you could be swiping on, you should be utilizing points. And in order to maximize your points, most of those cards are going to be metal credit cards. So call me superficial. I don't care. Use a metal credit card. I wanna hear that thing clink whenever you go to pay the bill at the end of the date. 
we're getting further down the list. Um, right here, only uses a debit card. The only reason I put this on here, it's the same thing as before, but I had a guy literally go to pay one time with a debit card that was shredded. It was in pieces, and I was like, is he going to be able to pick up this bill? Is he going to be able to pay for this date he invited me on? Um, that that was problematic, and it gave me a little bit of trauma, and so that tells me you're, you're irresponsible in a lot of ways. Next on the list is going to be no curtains. Um, grow up. No one wants to finally spend the night with you and then get woken up by the sun the next morning, especially if we went out, had a few drinks, had some glasses of wine, and my head hurts. I don't want to be woken up by the sun. Get some freaking curtains. Call your mom. Call your sister. Tell someone to get you some freaking curtains. Next on the list. Let's see here. Navy or plaid sheets. Grow up. Get some white sheets. To me, white means that it's clean. I need to know that it's clean. Now, I will say during the winter time, whenever I'm spray tanning, will I have gray sheets? Yes, I will. But with that being said, I need to know your sheets are clean. I need to see white sheets. I need to know that no other females have been rolling around in there with their spray tan. I need to know that you wash your sheets. Wash them. That's the reason hotels do it. You don't go into a hotel with some kind of like dark colored sheet. It's just not there. As we continue on, no hand towels. If I get to your house and I need to go wash my hands and I'm walking around with wet hands like this after I go to the bathroom, grow up. Grow up. I, we need men. We need men with hand towels. Grow up. Get your household items. The next thing on the list, he smokes six. That's disgusting. No one does that anymore. It's 2023. I guess people vape. That's still pretty gross too. That's a red flag. Ooh, that's so nasty. Um, next thing, has a photo of his vehicle on his social media. That's kind of weird. It's like a it's like a weird flex. Um, number one, you come off as douchey if it's too nice of a car. If it's something that's not a nice car, why did you post that? I, I don't think it's a good look at all whatsoever. Next on the list, sedans, unless it's a luxury vehicle. I need a man who can move my stuff for me. If, you know, I want to go and buy like a piece of furniture somewhere, I need you to be able to go and pick it up. That's a blue job. That's not a pink job. I need you to go pick things up for me. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We're going to keep rolling. Being in too good of a shape. I want my man looking like he might eat a cookie. I want him to look like he works out. But I want to share a cookie with you. And if I'm having to like feel your rock hard abs while I feel like my little bit of squish here, um, it's going to make me feel self-conscious. Let's go to part two on this. This video is getting a little long. That was honestly exhausting to listen to. And most of her icks were downright stupid. I also only like steak medium rare, rare or blue. And I do think it's pretty uncultured when people order steaks above that temperature. But how does that impact me whatsoever? Like if your one flaw as my partner is that you order your steak too done, how does that impact me at all? You eat it, not me. I'll have my own good steak. Having a plastic credit card, she says this makes so many of the things she lists are fixable, negotiable, or literally would not impact you in your day-to-day -day interacting with a person at all. Like not having hand towels, the kinds of sheets they have, hanging curtains, all of those are things you can do if it becomes a shared home. All of those are things he's probably willing to address if you vocalize them, even down to the kind of card that they use. That again is not really your business until you merge finances. If you want to be the person keeping up with a credit card, managing points, have at it. Not everybody wants that extra labor. Not everybody's good with a credit card. So again, this is just a weird thing to judge people on. And then items like never having gone to a therapist. I think what you should be looking for is, are they self-aware? Are they emotionally mature? Are they regulated? Not everybody needs to go to therapy in order to achieve that status. I do think it's a very big green flag when a man has been to therapy, but I wouldn't write somebody off over it. A few of her things were valid. I wouldn't date somebody who smokes cigarettes, but again, that's just a personal preference. I don't like cigarettes. I don't smoke them. My grandfather died from smoking, so I don't want to be around it. Again, plenty of people feel opposite than me. The tobacco industry makes millions of dollars every year. I just think these women's values are really skewed. And what I think is actually most interesting when we talk about the ick is what doesn't get brought up. Because so often I'm not hearing people mention things that are icks that really should be. Things around a person's value, their character, how they treat you, how they treat others, what their mentality is around volunteering or service or being charitable. Instead, it's almost always focused on really superficial things. Like this one, where apparently the girl is upset that her boyfriend is in the wind on a boat? Or this one where this person's partner is making fun of him for treading water? Or this one where the girl really cares what kind of coffee you order at Starbucks and what color your straw is? 
there is nothing more icky than watching a guy walk out of Starbucks with a frappuccino in his hand, like, sipping on his green straw. Oh my gosh. Order a black Americano like a man. It's just simply unhinged to me to care about these things. And as a whole, what you're saying to men when you put videos like this out there is that you can't be a whole human. You can't just move through the world as a person without being a turnoff. I love that video because I see this guy do this all the time where he stitches women talking about their icks and adds things to his list. And it clearly is getting very long. He said, hey, are you free on Friday? I don't have plans and was wondering if you wanted to grab drinks. Like, ew, you're 26 years old and you don't have plans for the weekend. That gives me the ick. I mean, maybe he was offered other plans, but he would just rather hang out with you. Okay, so he's too scared to tell me that I'm a priority. He clearly does not know how to communicate. Have the ick. Or you've gone on one date and he doesn't want to seem aggressive. Oh, so he thinks I'm the type of person that would be intimidated by him being forward. You know what? I literally hate being perceived. I'm done. Have the ick over it. Okay, well, I think he was just trying to be nice. Okay, and why are you being nice to me? I don't even know you. Ick. It really has been taken to such extremes. And I think as a whole, this is mostly an excuse for women to be avoidant. That's where I've landed. It's for women who are so afraid of getting hurt, they want to find any way to detach and keep men at a distance and not actually bond with them or form relationships or in any way be vulnerable or allow another person to be vulnerable with them. And that's a pretty sad state of affairs. There is nothing more icky than a man walking out of Pizza Hut with a cheese pizza in his hand. Like, he's so excited to go home and eat his cheese pizza. Why don't you order like a meat lover's pizza or at least a pepperoni pizza like a man? Like, it's so weird. As a whole, I think conversations about how men and women can better show up for one another, what men and women are looking like in this new era where we actually have equality, those are good things. Those are needed conversations. But we need to have them in a way that acknowledges one another's humanity, that's focused on positive outcomes. We need to extend grace to one another. And the ultimate goal should be finding ways that we can be better partners to each other and hopefully for more people to be able to find somebody to share their life with, which is a beautiful thing. That's not where it feels like the ick combo is going. So I'm officially checking out of it from this point on. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you next week. If you like this video, don't forget to check out others in my series, Histrionics Here, and you can watch my other weekly show, Hannah Explains It All, here.